y'all and welcome to Young Folk Knits. Today I actually have a finished object I am wearing and I have some updates on works in progress that I've been knitting away on as well as a little bit of a touchstone on some of the goals I had set for this year. And I can't forget a little bit of a spinning update. So stick around and we will jump right in. Welcome back to Young Folk Knits. If you're new here, my name is Casey, and this is a channel where I share all about my love of fiber arts, mainly knitting, but I also share about spinning and sewing and whatever else I might be getting up to at the moment. Sometimes I will share a little bit about living on a small farm here in Arkansas where my husband, myself, and our children are beekeepers. We love gardens and chickens and animals and spending time outdoors here in the foothills of the Ozarks. So if any of that sounds like it might be your cup of tea, then make sure and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on any future content. You can also find me on Instagram at youngfolk.knits and on Ravelry as well. It is almost the end of March and I have to say it's definitely going out like a line. It is so windy the last few days that sometimes I feel like I can barely stand upright. And that's saying a lot because I'm not very willowy. <laughs> but it is slowly starting to warm up. Our bees are really active right now. We have a lot of things blooming, especially the trees. We have a Bradford pear tree just right outside our window and the bees have just been swarming it. And pretty soon we'll have a field full of clover. And I love that fact because it makes for some of the best tasting honey. So I, I'm so happy that we just literally have just what seems like endless clover all over the fields. I'm sure the bees are getting excited for that as well. We did do a little check and we found two queens. One of the queens did not have the mark on it. So she is obviously a new queen that hatched out this year. And we're gonna go back in and try to find all the rest of the queens as well to make sure that the hives are in a good place going forward for this spring and summer for honey production and hive health. I was talking to a friend the other day about how difficult it is on bees right now. Our family and my husband's family, they do not allow pesticides or really any chemicals and dangerous poisons because first of all we want to protect our children but also you know it's so bad for the bees however we're surrounded by farmland everywhere and you know pesticides and not not just pesticides in their fields to kill weeds and all kinds of different things and the wind just blows it right over on us i know and not only that, but there's a lot of insects that weren't originally here. So there's some more beetles and um, of course there's also moths and mites and they will literally destroy a beehive. So I know this is not anything new. Most people are aware of the fact that bees are in a scarcity right now, but actually having beehives, trying to raise and care for them, you see how difficult it is to keep them alive. I'm very passionate about bees and especially our bees because I feel like we have an obligation since we did, you know, put them in this location and, you know, I've tried to keep them here. So I do feel this strong sense of commitment 
towards taking care of them. And it's so sad how hard it is. Actually, they have a better chance of survival if they are in a hive where a beekeeper is taking care of them than they do in the wild. And even so, you will lose a hive almost every year. That's one reason that most beekeepers, even hobbyist beekeepers like we are that just have, you know, a few hives. We've had 11 hives at one time, but even when you're starting out, they usually recommend that you get at least two hives because one of them will probably die over the winter. Won't necessarily happen, but it's a high possibility. Anyway, long story, I'm sure most of you are completely uninterested in this and I'm sorry for the tangent, but it's just mind blowing. I didn't realize until we started keeping bees how hard it is for them to survive and yet they're such strong, amazing, intelligent little insects. Very industrious, very hardworking, and I just think they're absolutely amazing. So this year, if you want to help out some bees, then it would be absolutely a great idea to get some wildflower packets that have seeds in it for different plants that bees love and need. And that would be a great way to help out the bees in your area. It's very easy to even get online and get a packet of seeds that specifically say that they're for bees. But just briefly, a few plants that bees love are sunflowers, calendula, um, coneflower or echinacea, lavender, cosmos, zinnias, um, Allium, milkweed, oh, my brain's having to work here. Marig marigolds, poppies, basil. Did I say goldenrod? Goldenrod's a really good one. <laughs> Borage. There's so many, I just, my brain's not working right now. I'll try to put a list in the description, but like I said, there are definitely little packets that you can buy that do not cost very much at all, and it's full of seeds that will grow some wildflowers for your local bees. If you get a chance to do that, then a great big thank you from the bees. Okay, so the reason you're here, back to the knitting. <laughs> I'm really excited because I do have a finished object this week. I have gotten my step-by-step -step cardigan, which was a pattern I test knit for Florence from Handmade by Florence. And I knit mine out of Noro Madara in the color Sake. So I've shared quite a bit about this yarn and this pattern along the way. And you can definitely go back and watch those videos if you wanna see more about my process. But I did want to chat a little bit about how I thought the finished fit was, what the fabric feels like on my skin. And also I wanna show you my buttons. So I made the size S and let's see, here's my belly button and so it comes a little bit down. These are some high-waisted linen pants from Not Perfect Linen and this is a discontinued color. I got this in a sale that they had last year in some discontinued colors. So this color is not available anymore and I do apologize for that but I love them they're so comfy and they have them in lots of different colors if you ever want to get some or better yet I think this is such a great simple pattern and a great substitute if you wanted to sew some linen pants that look like this are the Florence pants and the free range slacks and I'll link those in the description anyway this is a v-neck cardigan it is a raglan you can see my raglan increases here and it has a really nice relaxed fit ribbing which is about two and a half inches and some nice long sleeves with two by two ribbing on the cuffs as well as a double knit button band that you pick up and work after the fact. So this is a really great beginner friendly pattern. If you've never knit a stitch before in your life, then I would not suggest any garment. I would, you know, definitely start with something a little bit more simple to practice, 
your knits and purls. But I think that for a beginner still, this is great because Florence is writing up this pattern and making a YouTube video that takes you step by step through knitting this and it's all going to be free. So I think that's spectacular. And if you're wanting to get into knitting and if you're wanting to really get into garment knitting, absolutely amazing first garment. I think it will be perfect. Plus you're going to have the visuals of her walking you through step by step what to do. So I like the fact that it's raglan. Raglans are usually fairly forgiving on sizing especially if you lean more towards a little bit oversized. And I think that the polish, the double knit button Vandy gives is really nice as well. So I use some 25 millimeter buttons that are mussels and it's a brown mussel color. And they are from, I'm not sure how to say it, W-A-W-A-K sewing. And I ordered those Towards the end of the test knit, one thing I will mention, I was a little disappointed because I ordered three different colors of these buttons and they come in packs of 12. And in one bag, none of the buttons were broken, but in two bags, multiple buttons were broken, like three and just shattered. <laughs> so I definitely thought they could have packed that better. And I did reach out to them and let them know. They said that they were gonna replace the buttons. I have not received a replacement and it's been a while, but maybe I will get a replacement for those buttons at some point, I'll let you know. This was my first experience ordering from this store and they do have some beautiful buttons. So as long as I have a good experience with the customer service, then I would definitely feel comfortable recommending them. I decided to make this a little bit shorter than I have made in the past. And I have found myself doing that more recently because I've really been enjoying wearing high-waisted linen pants and French tucking the front of my sweater into my pants. So because of that, I've sort of found a sweet spot, um, which is the same place that I, the same length that I knit my recent Celeste sweater, which is a colorwork pattern from Petite Knit, and then the length of this as well. And I really like it. Okay guys, C130, C130, here we go. Again, I'm not even recording at the same time. So if my dogs start going crazy, it's a conspiracy. <laughs> it's amazing. It's truly amazing. Okay, a little bit more about the pattern. I thought it was very clear, very easy to understand. It's just a very simple pattern. You are gonna be knitting flat. So you knit back and forth. You're gonna knit on one side, purl on the other side. And the yarn that I chose to use, as I mentioned earlier, is Noro Madara. So this is a single ply yarn that is merino and alpaca. And silk, I want to say. Maybe not silk. Maybe it's just merino and alpaca. I'm very easily able to spit splice it. So it makes me think maybe there's not silk in it or maybe there's so little that the, the merino and alpaca just spit splice so well around it. I'll check. <laughs> I'll put it on the screen. Does this yarn contain silk? I'm not sure. <laughs> it is a single ply. And the color that I used, 01 sake, is very difficult to find anywhere. So it's this very neutral gray oatmeal base and it's got all of these flecks of tweedy fibers in it and they're very rainbow colored. So up close you have a lot more colors that you notice. Lots of primary blue, orangey red, and greeny yellow but from a distance it looks very neutral and the color sort of fade into the oatmeal color so I think that's kind of fun but I was surprised after how many pictures I had seen of finished garments using this yarn I was a little bit surprised when I got it in person at how strong the tweed colors look but I am very happy with it now that it's a fully finished garment when it was just you know smaller swatches of it um, I was like oh my goodness this is a very strong 
tweed, <laughs> but when you have the full garment, it doesn't look that way. So a little bit about the feel of the fabric. I am wearing it over a tank top and um, it, it's not on my chest, so I don't have to worry about any itch. I find that the double knit collar is just extremely flat and it is much less itchy. And also probably because it's knit a little bit of a tight gauge, it just feels very compact and flat. And there's very, I don't really feel much texture at all. Now, the inside of this is, um, you know, reverse stockinette, it's pearl. I actually think that I can feel the texture more in reverse stockinette. I'm, that may sound crazy, but I can rub the outside of this sweater and it feels softer than the inside. And so there's a little bit of these stray alpaca hairs that I can feel. And I wouldn't necessarily say it's itchy, but there's a little prickle, a little bit. And if I was really hot, I think I could definitely feel it, but it doesn't bother me. My tolerance for wooly feeling garments has grown a lot over time. And like I said, as long as it's not hot, this doesn't bother me at all. I really like it. I like to feel wool on my skin, but I think if it was all the way up my neck, it might bother me a little bit more unless it's cool. The reason I say that is because I did knit a as I'm thinking, I'm like, well, I knit a full turtleneck sweater out of this recently, um, but I knit it in the dead of winter. It was very cold outside and it didn't bother me one bit. So maybe it's just the fact that it's really starting to warm up and get a bit hot sometimes. And so I can feel this a little bit more. Another thing I want to mention about the yarn is that it does have a tendency to break. So I'm a very loose knitter. I don't have hardly any tension on my working yarn while I'm knitting, and so I never had it break. But many people do experience that, and I think that if you are a tight knitter, you would very likely experience it. Almost like you're knitting with unspun yarn, like Newton and um, Manchalopi's. What is it? Um, not Let Lopi. What is the name of that Lopi yarn? Anyway, uh, unspun yarn. Being a single ply, it's very close to unspun, although, you know, there's definitely going to be a little bit more strength in a single ply. However, it's very loosely spun. It also has a lot of thick and thin pieces. I love that, but some people don't like that. So keep all of that in mind when thinking about this yarn and the fabric that it will create. Before we chat all about my current projects, I do want to say a quick thank you to the sponsor of today's video. If you've been here before, you know that I am a big fan of the Choose app. It is my daily drop of cool, and most of them are small businesses that I feel good about supporting. In fact, a lot of them are small businesses that I have purchased from and followed for many years. So I love the fact that I can find them on this platform. And a lot of times it will be free shipping as well. So I think that's really great. One thing that I'm a huge fan of is rings, specifically gold rings. And I, I do like earrings, but I have very sensitive skin. Sometimes earrings are hit or miss, even if they are the perfect metal, I still will have issues sometimes and my hair gets caught in necklaces a lot because of that my absolute favorite jewelry is rings i love loading on the gold rings this month i picked out some really fun stackable rings they had a great selection of sizes i got free shipping and fast shipping too even though they came from paris which i thought was super cool they're constantly adding beautiful new minimalist jewelry but also super fun electronics kids clothes shoes, plant-based cosmetics. So every day there's a little something new. If you would like to check out the Choose app, then you can follow the link in my description and you can use the code YOUNGFOLKNITS for $20 off your first purchase. Thank you so much Choose app for sponsoring today's video. All right, now let's jump into the whips. I'm so sorry if you can hear the airplanes outside. 
please ignore them. I don't even live close to the Air Force Base, but they train over my house constantly. I do apologize. Let's just try to ignore them. The first whip I want to show you is my Pohyola pullover, which is a pattern that is written by Sari Nordland. And I am knitting this as part of the Pohyola cowl or knit along that I'm actually having the pleasure of co-hosting with Sari. So this is a knit along that lasts from the beginning of March. So it's almost been a month now and it's gonna go through the end of April. So this has been really fun. I have loved seeing the different colors that y'all have picked out. I have seen some extremely unexpected colors that have really piqued my interest and some bright colors, some really moody colors, some bright neutral colors, like light, I mean, not really bright, but light colors, and I love them. I would have never thought of some of those colors. I think they look fantastic. So if you would like to see what everybody else is making, you can look at the hashtag Pohyola Cal and Pohyola Pullover. If you want to participate in the knit along, then you can post on Instagram with Pohyola Cal or in Sari's Ravelry group. There is a thread for the Pohyola knit along, which I will link in the description box below. So it's really fun seeing what everybody is making. I chose to knit my pullover out of yarn from Sonder Yarn Co. This is their four plot fingering base, which is a BFL and Massam mix, mainly BFL, which gives it this really beautiful luster. BFL is such a lovely yarn. And something I like about this base is that it blooms really nicely. So the fingering weight yarn itself seems fairly thin, but once you soak it, it just puffs to this beautiful, bloomed, magical base, which I absolutely love. I chose to do mine in the colors Full English, which is this rusty brown color. And then up here is the color Offline, which is an oatmeal color. It's actually undyed. So this is the base color for all the other yarns that are dyed. And I just think it's beautiful. You can see why Melissa's colors just are so lovely because we're starting off with this gorgeous base. Okay, and then the other color is Personal Space. So this is a three color stranded color work sweater and there is some purling in <laughs> the color work as well. I was very reluctant to knit this and even though I wanted to desperately, I just thought, oh my goodness, that sounds like a lot of work and sometimes I'm a lazy knitter. I am so glad that I went ahead and did it though because I was obsessed with the pattern. I thought it was one of the most beautiful pullovers I had ever seen. But the three stranded color work ended up not being that big of a deal at all, which I've done three stranded color work many, many times. I just have never enjoyed it. And that's because as I've mentioned before, I'm an English knitter and I would always have to pick up and set down my strands. This time, however, I decided to carry the most dominant color always and never set it down. And then I only had to pick up and set down the two other colors, which I switched back and forth into my right hand, <laughs> left and right. You know, it's, it's kind of scary that I'm a respiratory therapist because I am really bad with my left and right and reading the x-rays it's backwards, so you always have to keep in mind that x-rays are backwards. And it's just, I have lived a life of confusion. <laughs> I need to have permanently tattooed on my hands L and R. And, you know, people say, oh, it makes the L. And I'm like, wait a minute, am I dyslexic? They both look like L's. Zero help in the moment. Anyway, I did split for sleeves and I did my short row shaping. So as you can see in the back, you get quite a bit more fabric from the short row shaping. I worked the color work 
portion on US 6 or 4 millimeter needles. And then Sari suggests you go down to a US 4 for the body. And I did that because we do basically have exactly the same gauge. One other thing I can't remember if I've mentioned previously, but I decided I did not want a double folded collar. I wanted a sort of mock neck. And so because of that, I actually cast on with a tubular cast on and just knit straight for three inches instead of the four inches I think it called for or however many inches it called for I did three inches and I'm really happy about that. I tried this on after I split for sleeves and I love the fit. I was worried but it actually fits really good and I think one of the things that has helped this is the fact that I did not sew my collar down because it has a lot of stretch and that stretch at my neck here has really helped the color work portion the fabric of this to be able to stretch to a spot that works well for me and I think sometimes people can knit color work a little bit tightly and if you fold, then fold the neck over and sew it down, you're just adding to the rigidity of that. And it might cause this section here to sort of look off a little bit, I think, unless you, you know, were very loose with your color work and sewed your collar down loosely. I'm not saying that it will be that way for everybody, but I can see how it would have been that way for me, possibly. And I think the fact that I did not sew my collar down and I also did not pick up my collar. I just knit straight into the yoke from the collar. There's a lot of give and that's a good thing in this case. I think it really helps the way the sweater lays. So I'm very happy about how this is working up. I do want to mention that this yarn was gifted as yarn support for the knit along and I I just love it. This is one of my absolute favorite bases. I have purchased this yarn multiple times. So I can say with absolute honesty that this is a great base and I love Sondra Yarn Co. I wanted to show you how much yarn I have left over. So there's an option to do color work on the sleeves. I'm not doing that. I'm gonna do completely plain sleeves and not just because I'm a lazy knitter, I am doing that because I actually prefer the look of it. But since I have split for sleeves, this is still my very first ball of um, the full English. And I've been knitting in around for like two inches since I split for sleeves. This is my leftover from the personal space color. Took me a minute there. And I feel like I used a fourth of a ball. I need to measure and I'm going to put all the weights of how much yarn I used in my Ravelry project page. But I feel like I used a fourth of this ball, at most a third, and I still have a lot left over. If you, I can't remember if Melissa have, has minis in the four ply, but I feel like she does. And I knit the size six, so if you don't do the sleeves and you're knitting a smaller size than me, I would think that for your contrast color too, you might could use a mini. So I'll measure and let you know for sure. That's gonna depend on what size you make and if you do the, the contrast color, the color work on the sleeves. Now this is the offline and you do a large portion including the collar and a little bit of the yoke before the color work starts with this. So as you can see, I've used possibly two thirds, maybe a half. I'll measure this and put it in my Ravelry notes as well. But uh, you would go ahead and need a skein of that color. I'm gonna leave it there on the Pohiola pullover for today, but I'm hoping to make some progress on that as well. I don't think I'm gonna knit this super long. I don't really wear cropped in the sense, I think most cropped sweaters are considered to be at the belly button or above even. I definitely want this to be a couple inches below my belly button. I would like the stockinette fabric to end at my belly button and then have like three inches of ribbing that I can then 
tuck into my pants or wear over high-waisted pants. And that is the fit I am very drawn to lately. So that is my plan. I'm going to keep working on that. The other project I want to show you is something I cast on and it is my Winona dress, which is also a pattern by Sari Nordland. I have wanted to knit a dress for a while and I just haven't gotten around to doing it and I decided this was the year. So a very, very kind viewer actually gifted this pattern to me, which I had in my wish list. And I want to say thank you to all of you who have so kindly and generously sent me a pattern for my wish list. It has been so extremely kind of you and I cannot say thank you enough. It just always makes my day whenever I receive a pattern. It also influences a bit what I will end up casting on next because I will have that pattern ready to go. So a big thank you. I do appreciate your kindness so much. Um, I do have the Ravelry wish list in my description box below if you ever decide you would like to support the channel by gifting a pattern. I appreciate it so much. Okay, so a little bit about this. This is knit up with Sanis Garn Tick Lena, which is a thick version of the Lena or Tin Lena. It's a chunky weight yarn. And this was sent to me because I am knitting this in a collaboration with Mother Knitter. So I am using the color 6531 and this, I, they don't have names, they just have numbers. But I think that it is sometimes called Icy Blue on some of the websites. But this is a 53% cotton. 33% viscose and 14% linen. These are 50 gram balls. It's definitely a base of summer fibers, which I love, but it is a chunky weight. So you definitely do need to keep that in mind. It does have a lot of weight to it. One thing I do like though, is you've got some nice thick I-cord straps. They're not your normal three stitch I-cord. So I think that is definitely going to help give it more stability and hopefully less stretch in the I cord. And I think one thing is nice, there's no going back and, you know, picking up stitches to finish the sides because you're knitting an I cord edge as you go. You do have to graft the I cord together at some places, but it takes like two seconds and these straps took me like two seconds to knit as well <laughs> that's the nice thing about the big gauge so you can see the progress I've made I'm just sort of knitting along on it and I actually have a project diary that's going to be coming out with my entire process of knitting this so I will give you all the details on it at that point um I do want to mention though that Mother Knitter has offered a 10% off discount code on the Tick Alina in case you would like to knit this along with me or um, I know Lindsay from Always Yarn First told me that she used this to knit the Montpellier, Mont, Montpellier top not sure how to say that. She used it in that. So anything with an Erin chunky bulky weight gauge this will work in and it would be a great option if you're wanting to knit something bulkier but you want to wear it in the warmer months. And the code that you can use is Young Folk Knits with a capital Y and then the K is capital in knits. So Young Folk Knits and you can get 10% off this yarn base if you would like to try it as well. So far it's going great. I have two things that I really like about it. One is that because of the higher gauge, it's moving along really quickly. And two, um, even though it is a larger gauge, it seems to be breathable. Now I'm going to wait until I finish it and wear it, <clears throat> excuse me, before I give you my final thoughts on that. But I do like those two things. And it seems to have a really nice um, coverage in the sense of you can't see through it. 
I think the color that I used helps as well. Two things I don't like. <laughs> One is that you can't sp spit splice this yarn and you can't even really weave it in very well so that it stays in place due to the nature of the fiber base which again is the reason I'm using it because I did want the fiber base, but the downside of that fiber base is that you practically have to join with a magic knot if you don't want it to move and, you know, hope that it's, that the magic knot holds and will possibly be visible, or you have to tie a knot in your ends and then sew it in and hope that it won't be visible and will stay in place. So that is a negative when it comes to fiber bases like this, it is very hard to join a yarn and hide the join. Um, but it is what it is. I try to make sure that I'm always doing the joins on the side. So you can see my, my markers here that show my increases. And I just try to make sure that every time I join a ball of yarn, it's not in the front of the fabric, but at the side. And that way it won't matter as much. And the other thing is that these are 50 gram balls and so you're joining your yarn a lot. <laughs> so my main complaint is the join, the joins in every way. Not a huge fan, but I am so far a fan of the project as a whole and the yarn as a whole. So I will be posting a project diary video of this when it's completed and um, I am making the size six and I don't know if I mentioned before, but I'm making the size six in the Pohiola pullover as well. I tend to be a size five or size six in Sari Nordland's patterns. And if there's anything that I want some nice ease in, then I'll go ahead and go up a size to the size six. And I definitely don't want this to be skin tight. <laughs> so in the pattern, she does suggest zero ease and I was not feeling that. So I did go up to the size six and, and I've been trying it on. And so far I'm very, very happy with the fit. I also mentioned that I wanted to do a little check-in on my goals for this year. So the first thing I want to talk about is <laughs> the goal that I had of keeping better records. And so far I must say, I'm very proud of myself because I've written down every project. This is my step-by-step -step card again, and I've got some notes there. And nope, that was a different, that was not my step-by-step -step card again. That was my test lady card again. Let me see. Okay, here is my step-by-step -step card again. And this is my maker's notebook, which is from Making Treasures. And this was gifted to me, but it was like a friend gift. It wasn't a um, sponsored gift or, you know, she didn't ask me to show it or anything like that. Sophie is just super sweet and she gave me one of these because we're pals. <laughs> so I have really, really loved using it. And another goal I had was to knit cardigans this year. And can I just say, I have completed multiple cardigans this year and I'm very proud of myself. Perfect timing because uh, Cece from Stitch Witchcraft is holding a Mal and it is the year of the cardigans Mal. I, I think I said the right words there. I think that's what it's called. Um, I'll put it in the description below, but I'm excited because I am going to be knitting the book club Cardi as soon as Sari uh, gets that ready for testing. And there's a couple other cardigans that I really want to finish, like my heirloom quilt cardigan. I'm obsessed with it and desperately need it. <laughs> so I've got a few things that I'm going to be very excited to knit along with that make along, but Anyway, I feel pretty good about my goals for the year. I've also had a goal of spinning up a sweater quantity and then actually knitting with that sweater quantity. And I have gotten two bobbins done on my spin for the Traveler hoodie. I'm using um, Hello Yarn Fiber Club monthly bases, you know, from each or colorways, I should say. So they're all different colors and I'm doing a combo spin with it. So it's coming up super fun and I've done both sleeves 
already. I, I spun the yarn in a very specific way, which is going to be used for sleeves. I have both sleeve yarn done, and then I've got two very, very full bobbins of hand spun that I'm going to be plying together. And when I apply those together, that will be on two bobbins uh, at least. So that'll be two skeins of hand spun for the body. So I feel like I am chugging away fairly well and enjoying it very much. Nothing is really what it seems anyway Now little by little In the twilight's gentle flow In the dance of fading light we grow something else that I'm wearing <laughs> today. I actually have hand knit socks on today. I am wearing my uh, Tender Age socks from the, is it the In Bloom sock set by Summerly Knits. I made these out of Magpie fibers and they're one of my absolute favorite spring socks because they're not shorties, but they're like somewhere in between you know, full length and ankle socks and they have some really pretty lace on them and little baubles and I love them so much. In fact, I love to wear them with my clogs. <laughs> um, that's one of my absolute favorite spring outfits ever is hand knit socks, clogs, linen pants, and a hand knit sweater. Like this is my dream outfit. <laughs> 
but yes, I love clogs. What are your favorite shoes to wear hand knit socks with? I've seen a, you know, ever since Melody from, um, oh my goodness, I'm losing my mind. Melody Hoffman posted a picture of her see-through rain boots with her hand knit socks. And I feel like there's been like a huge obsession lately with see-through rain boots. And I really wanted some, but I'm trying to do better about my spending and my buying because honestly, how many days a week would I wear see-through rain boots? Not very many. And so I restrained myself and I felt good about it. Here is your reminder. You know, even though you see things on my podcast and other people's podcast, draw inspiration from it. Draw color inspiration. If it's something you need, it's a great time to get it if you can use a discount code. But never feel like just because you see something, you have to get it. I am trying to really keep that in mind this year and a little, you know, a little self-control is a good thing. And then whenever there's something you see that you do need and you could really put to good use, then you can feel good about getting it. All right, friends, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate the fact that you are here. If you enjoy videos like this, then make sure and give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on any future content. As always, thank you for your comments. I love reading the notes that you leave for me. I love hearing what you're up to and your thoughts and suggestions on the different projects I'm making. They're actually very helpful to me and have in fact, changed my mind on certain plans that I have. So thank you so much for being here and for being part of the Young Folk Knits community. And I look forward to chatting again soon. Until next time, happy knitting y'all.